What's up everybody, thank you for stopping by. I am BH the Uncivilized and this is going to be an analysis on the game, The Unfinished Swan. Now this will contain spoilers, so if you haven't played it already then you may wish to do that first. In fact, if you haven't played it, highly recommended, excellent game. But if you haven't, but if you have played it, or if you just don't care for spoilers, then we continue. Now, by the time we get to the end of the game of Unfinished Swan, the king gives Monroe a silver paintbrush and tells him that maybe one day people would say that he was a better man than his father. Now, the game seems to allude to the metaphor that Monroe is learning about his father as we progress through the game. And if that is the case, then what type of man was his father and why did his mother, the queen, leave all of a sudden? That's what we'll be talking about in this video. So first, let's take a look at the uh, king's story. Now, in chapter one, we are introduced to him as the young and arrogant king. He felt no colors were good enough for his kingdom, so he painted everything white. Um, after the settlers came and continually made demands, he eventually could not ignore them any longer and decided to leave and then promised he'll come back, but of course never he never did. Now this tells us uh, two things. One, he is arrogant, and two, he has a problem with people, which we learn more about later on. Now in chapter two, we get more examples of his arrogance and his disdain for others. He only built the sewer system because he didn't want people peeing in his pots. He tried to ignore them at first. The statue in the garden in a maze has the inscription of all his creations, his greatest was himself. So again, another sign of arrogance. Also, when he painted the water canal to sweep away the garbage, it swept away the slower children along with it. But we don't hear anything about him trying to get them back. So it's no surprise people grew tired of his demands to pull up the vines and when he wasn't looking they watered them instead behind his back. And when he inadvertently painted the half finished creature, it was only the giant and the pet hippo that helped him to get rid of it. And I'll come back to those a bit later on. In chapter 3 we found out that the king no longer wanted to create these perfect kingdoms only to attract these less than perfect subjects and he wanted to leave a legacy and start a family. But he's no good with people so instead of talking to someone he paints himself a wife who is referred to as a female version of himself so the queen is just like him now the king's in love he's painting gifts for her but he's still ignoring people doesn't realize that she is not interested even though she makes no efforts to hide that fact she only keeps his first gift the silver paintbrush and paints creatures of the forest but being just like the king she never finishes any of them Five months go by and the king does find out that she's pregnant and that he eventually did notice, which means that she didn't tell him. No communication suggests that she might have been trying to hide it. And then, the night before she's due to give birth, the queen just leaves, disappears, no explanation, just gone. Now, chapter four doesn't really add much to the story. It's mainly the king talking about his feelings, seeing his life's work destroyed, and after he died, realizing it would be painted over by someone else, and then coming to terms with that fact. But what we do get in chapter four is the alluding to the metaphor, such as looking in the mirror and seeing himself at the, at the uh, dining room, but then at the funeral, when he looks in the mirror, he sees Monroe, and then at the end, the king gives Monroe the silver paintbrush. So what does all this mean? Now, as it is all very metaphorical, it can mean many things, but here's my take on it. Now, when Monroe's father was a young man, he was arrogant, obnoxious, and genuinely believed he was better than everyone. He ignored many people, seeing them as beneath him. He only interacted with people when he benefited in some way. He was probably an artist, a creative or an innovator of some kind, but people either didn't understand what he created or just mistreated it. Now this annoys him so he left but the same thing happened again. This time he created a monster. The monster represents his anger lashing out but realizes that he cannot live like that so with the help of the giant and the pet hippo he sends the monster away. The giant and the hippo are also representative of himself. The hippo being his softer gentler side and the giant being his inflated sense of self. It can be of good help but doesn't do anything and is happiest when left alone. So now he wants a family to leave a legacy but doesn't know how to communicate with people so he paints his own wife. Now this is where I believe the story touches on abduction or human trafficking. Monroe's father is arrogant, selfish and although he recognises some of his faults, he cannot communicate very well with people, he cannot interact with people. So instead of talking in the say more traditional ways, he takes one. And this is why I think the Queen, Monroe's mother, was uninterested. She never wanted to be there in the first place. It's why she tried to hide the pregnancy and why she left without explanation. Chapter 4 shows us Monroe's father's thoughts through life and his repentance after death. Now, not necessarily death in the literal sense, but death in that his world has ended. The realisation that he has caused his own misery and perhaps believing it is now too late for him. 
And that is what I think of the unfinished swan. Let me know if you agree or disagree or if you think there's something that I've missed. If you liked this video, then please show the like and share button some love. And be sure to subscribe and check out some of the other videos on the channel as well if you haven't already. Any questions about movies, video games, or just life in general, let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. But that is all for now. So thank you for watching. And until next time.